Hi, I'm Terry Strongman at the Ryan Q. Ramachur Rocket. Thank you for selecting this video on a midday break. Or about midday break. A midday break. Before continuing, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, take the time right now to do it. While you're at it, activate the notification bell feature. Don't forget to share the joy of this channel with others. Oh, and of course, comment courteously below right here in the comment area. And uh, then you can give the video a thumb up whether you liked it or not. And so now moving on. What, I'm ta what am I talking about? Like midday break? I'm talking about like during the lunch hour, if you have an hour. If you don't, then we'll say lunch 15, uh, half hour. Well, we're talking about a half hour during an hour break or 15 minutes during a half hour break, something like that. Maybe if you're at home, you can eat for a half hour and then do this other thing for another half, for the other half hour. The thing I'm talking, excuse me, the thing I'm talking about is, is, uh, um, Wives used to, whenever this was a common practice, especially when, you know, in the days of the housewife, they might take, um, you know, during, during lunchtime, take a break, have some lunch. Excuse me again. I just shaved and, you know, like little hairs, they get, ah, terrible. All right. And then take a nap for a half hour. They called it. Their afternoon nap, or their midday nap, their noon nap. I'm going to call it the other thing that it would be called, and has been called, you know, resting your eyes, resting your mind, just resting. I'm going to rest my body, rest my mind and body for a half hour, you know, right around halfway through the, uh, the work day wherever that is, outside the house, inside the house, whatever. Okay, well, now why talk about this? This is because probably a lot of women, people in general, men and women, who have done such a thing in the past and who may do it now or give it a shot now that they I've resurrected this into our idea about getting through the day, the average day, might not know how to do that very well, the resting part, especially the resting the mind part, might not know how to do that very well. You get the point, you know, like rest your eyes. I guess that means closing your eyelids, not using your eyeball for a half hour. Resting your body, I guess that means, you know, recline, get on, get on the bed, pull the blanket over, just take off your shoes. Take off your shoes, lay on the bed, pull up a blanket or the bedspread, something, or a sheet, just something, you know, because you're not going to be active, your blood's not going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, getting activated into flowing. Your blood flow is going to slow down a little bit. You're going to enter a restful state in a prone position. So you pull a sheet over here, you know, light blanket, something like that. But you have your clothes on, just take off your shoes. Let your feet relax a little bit outside of the confines of footwear other than socks. And um, close your eyes, right? And what's more than rest your mind, but that seems to be the part where people might not know how to do that very well. They might lie there and their mind just keeps on going. Well, that's not really giving it a rest. What it is is giving up at best for most people, I think, voluntary attention direction. But it still keeps going from one thing to the other. You may, and, and you, you, you're you letting it go wherever the heck it wants, but it's not really getting a rest. It's just going from some voluntary directed control uh, to involuntary on your part, you know. That's all, it's the only difference. But that's not really a rest, is it? No, that's just kind of letting it go wild wherever it wants. That's the only thing, which it usually is doing anyway. 
<laughs> in large, 98%. So you give up your 2% of, of attempted voluntary direction control, and you just give that up, you remove that, and now you have 100% just rampant wildness. That's not, but the point is, not really doing very well with resting your mind for a half an hour. Unless it's working well. Unless that's a habit to do that really well, you know? Something you, you keep getting better and better at, you know, like, like you've, you've had a technique for that in the past and you've been doing it for a long time and now you don't even have to really think about that technique. Your mind does this now really well. It's able to just mm, slow down and maybe even stop a bit, whatever that means. Well, let's talk about what that is and the technique to get there. So we, we, we're going to notice this, you know, your improvement with this, your actual, not just resting your body, not just resting your eyeballs, which is part of your body, right? But also your mental activity. Uh, a technique for that to happen. Now, you, you will notice that, you know, there will be, it will go through phases of development. For you. One will certainly be that you have to employ a technique and uh, get better and better at it. And then maybe the technique just starts to fall off because this becomes the, the, the result of it, the operational side of it. You know, once you've been applying the structure of it, the, the its operation may become more automatic. You just lay down, you close your eyes, it's afternoon uh, rest of time, half hour break time, something like that, you know, whatever you call it, and it just starts to happen. But it's good to still be able to employ the technique, you know, until you've mastered this. Okay, so what's the technique? Well, let's, let's, let's think of one. How do you do that? What's it mean to give your mind a rest? Well, that means, well, what does it mean to give your body a rest? It doesn't mean go unconscious. It doesn't mean get general anesthesia. <laughs> it, it doesn't mean, you know, like have a near-death experience. It doesn't mean any of that stuff. It doesn't mean get a full night's sleep. It doesn't mean that stuff. You know, it doesn't mean even going to sleep. You might drift off a little bit. But that's not necessarily part of it. You know, you get it to slow down. You stop, you stop its activity. You stop its voluntary activity. You let things up to the autonomic nervous system, and you lay still. You just chill it out. So we want to do something equivalent with our minds, right? That's that's what we expect. <clears throat> you know, if the, if the vice versa were the case here, like we were really good with the mental side, the mind side, but not very good with the body side, it'd be like, okay, it's time for our afternoon half-hour thing. Early afternoon, midday, half hour thing. Our minds just like chill out, slow down, come to a steady, placid state. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about zero activity, you know, like blank. No, it's not, it's not recommended. No, it's not even really possible. Um, hmm. Contrary to some weird beliefs about it. Uh, you know. But your body just keeps on going. Still taking out the trash. Still running around the house cleaning. That sounds absurd, doesn't it? Well, it's equally as absurd, really, <laughs> to be the other way around. So what do you do? What do you do? How do you bring this out of absurdity? Here's a mat here's the thing to do. It doesn't matter what your starting point is with this. You, you employ this technique and you're gonna get better at it. If you're supposed to slow down, if what your idea here is now, your revised idea of resting your mind is, as I'm suggesting, to slow it down, get the motion to just kind of like cease. It's going to have to stay on something. 
because it's always going to be focused on doing something. But the idea is to slow it down. So what goes on when you lay down and you close your eyes? There might be dialogue going on. There might be memories going on. It might be emotional upset going on. It might be a jumping from one thing to another. But there's always going to be mental imagery. It's going to be an ongoing uh, compilation of, of effects, you know, sounds, mental chatter, mental clamor, stuff you can't even, you know, identify, stuff you're not really aware of, mental images, just like this running, eyes closed, daily activity, but eyes closed in here, right? Whatever list you want to make of what that's composed of. There's always going to be imagery involved. There's going to be this changing mental atmosphere, mental environment, mental landscape is going to be shifting. Right? That's mental activity. Take a bit of rest. If it doesn't know how to do that by itself when it's time to do that, and you will that to happen and desire for that to happen, but it just doesn't happen, then you're going to have to do it. You're going to have to... You're going to have to uh, impose something like that onto it. So is there a method to make that happen? Not really. It's just a matter of making it happen. So what is it that you're making happen? Well, I just said it. That ongoing changing mental landscape thing. Stop it. Oh, but that seems to be the problem, doesn't it? Yes, it is. But the actual doing of it isn't that hard. <clears throat> Think of it like this. Think of that whole mental landscape changing thing being this cup moving around. Right? Well, for most people, it really doesn't take a heck of a lot to actually just, in your mind, just like make it stop. Kind of like, kind of like the, the the hospital heart monitor, you know the thing you go beep, 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 you know beep, 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 but then it flatlines. Well, it's not really a line going across. That's just the the, the visual display. It's just a matter of this thing that goes up and down now stays put in one spot. You can do that with this whole scene. It's not that hard, really, for most people. No, even attention deficit disorder people, you know, you take, you put a little practice into this. It's just like a little mind game. It's like, here he is all moving and changing, but you just, like, don't do that anymore. You just, instead, you just go, you just pick a spot. Pick, pick, pick a, a moment and then hold that one. Just like there. Like, okay, let's say it involves a train coming for, towards you. On the tracks. You know, you're standing at spilled something. You're standing at a train station. And here comes the train. <clears throat> oh, geez, even there too. It's just a Yeah, I think it's raining in here. <laughs> Excuse me about that. All right, so so you're seeing it, but then all of a sudden the whole scene just stops. So now think of that in your mind, right? You see the train coming, you see the train coming, and you stop it. Just like, pick a moment. Pick a moment, that's all. It seems to be the hard part. You know, like, when do you do it? What do you... What do you do when you stop it? What's it look like and all that? It's wherever you stop it. That's where. That's what it looks like. It's at whatever point, whatever moment, what's going on, you just kind of like don't let it move forward anymore. Just kinda like, whoa, hold it right there. Well, what does that look like? Depends on what was going on right then. You just stop it. Don't let it progress. Just keep it there. If it tries to progress, you go, 
right back to it. You see how I just stopped? Ooh, maybe it's that scene going on in your head. And then you go, and that's what stays there like that, right? And you see yourself going, starting to go like this. It's just stop. And then you go, no, no more to say. Nothing else to go. That's giving your mind a rest. You just stop. You gotta like stop it. Does that mean you just went blank? No. Does it mean you have trouble figuring out what's it like to do that? No. It's just the action of it. That's it. You know, you just kind of like go, stay there. Stay. Just like. Boop, boop. And he tries to move forward into something else. If it does move forward into something else, then you catch it. Well, then, now that's where you stop. Stop. He's like, just hold that note. Okay. Try it. That's giving your mind a break, giving it a rest. You might not know how to do that. See? You get what I mean? So if, if you lay down in the bed for a half hour, you take off your shoes, you close your eyes, you pull a blanket over you, but you don't, your mind doesn't know how to do that. And you don't know how to get your mind to do it. Well, then it's not going to do it. Well, then that's not giving your mind a rest, is it? You're not letting it take its rest. You're not letting it get its rest. You're not giving it its rest. You might have to actually give it to it. Like, this is how. This is what that is. It's not a big deal. It's not some high fluting thing that you have to go to shrinks about to learn about or anything. That's thing. No, it's, it's just this. It's the obvious thing. It's the thing that we call it. And that's entirely possible. For pretty much anybody. I, if you can understand what I'm saying, you know what I mean? Okay, give that a try. Okay. And then if you get good at it, you know, well, you will get good at it if you practice. Just keep doing that every day for a half hour. No strain, just easily, okay? No requirements, really. No deadline, no progress exams. No oral exams over it. Nobody giving you a grade. Just do that. Just keep repeating that. Second by second, moment by moment, day by day, half hour by half hour. That's all. Nothing else to add to this. That's it. That is it. So just repeat it. Repeat it. Repeat it. Just keep doing that. You will get better at it. Sure you will. Now, the more you get better at it, the better you get, the more of a refreshing result you're going to get. The more you're going to notice that it works, that, you know, what it was intended for. Okay? You're surely going to notice the result of having taken your shoes off for a half hour in the middle of the day. Feels good. Feels good. You can give your feet a break from that restricted feeling and walking on them in these in this footwear you might not even notice how annoying that gets and so you take your shoes off every day for a half hour for about three days in a row you're going to start to notice the same results from having just laid down and rested your overall body and the same with your mind if it's really getting that rest you're giving it that, and then it learns to just do it itself. You've given it to it, you know, and now it knows the deal, and it gets associated with the time of the day, the intent involved, and so forth. And the more you do that, the better it's going to have an effect on your life. It becomes your daily routine the best you can, okay? There you go. It doesn't have to be a full half hour. If all you really get is a half hour break at work, 
and there's nowhere to lay it down, you do what you can, okay? Just modify it. There you go. Thanks for selecting this video about that. If you like it, give it a thumb up. Didn't like it, give it a thumb up. Somebody else will see the thumb up, watch it, and like it. Okay? So uh, share the joy of the channel with others, and that's one way to do it. Comment courteously below. Share the joy of the channel with others. Like I said, uh, what else? Subscribe. Click on the notification bell feature. And uh, that's about that. All right. This is Theron Q. Ramachiraka. I'm Turk Strongman. Be well. Give your mind a rest. Might need it. Probably does.